What is up, YouTube? Ben Cordy, are you with our friend? All right. What's up? My name is Josh. I decided to play my Debbie Necroz today. The Debbies just got released, and I love playing this deck. I've been following you at Locals for a little while now. You've been playing this for, what, three weeks now? Uh, two, I think, now. Okay. Two weeks now. Uh, I like the archetype Necroz so much, uh, so it's something I really enjoy playing and I'm fond of. Um, I really haven't played Go Cure Sky Striker since Nats, so I wanted to pick something up different. But I'll bring you guys through it and show you okay. why. Um, so the namesake cards, the Debbies. Okay, so um, what makes these guys actually so good? These things are great because this one you can reveal a uh, ritual spell in your hand and you summon it and you summon the other guy and this guy gets the monster. So they just correct your hands and they give you free fodder. So this can get, if you summon this guy, you summon this guy off of it. You get any ritual spell and vice versa. So this can get you any monster, this can get you any spell. Uh, do you have any issues conflicting with locking you out of your own extra deck? Uh, not really because Valkyrs contributed off. Oh, to draw two? Only, yeah, so this is only when it's faced up on the field. Okay. So if you don't ritual with it, you just tribute it off for Valk, which is what I do with the six a lot. Okay. So it gives you a free plus one. Okay. And that's usually a good interaction. And when we get the five and the three, it gives us more healthy numbers, numbers that are more useful. Okay. The six isn't really useful. Four is kind of useful, but I definitely want to um, add the three and five. Have you considered Lone Fire Blossom to bring this guy out yet? Uh, no, not overly, because you don't, like, you want them enough, but, like, you want them to be pluses. Okay. And, like, you want them from hand. Like, I don't want my normal summons to clunk, because I have Manju and Senju. Okay. And they're just strictly almost better. Okay. Uh, two Colossalists, I don't like three. Um, you never want to open multiples of rituals, but you can always get to them. And opening three of this, or multiples, and two is just awful. Uh, one Unicorn, because it's at one. Uh, one Bryo, it's at one. Uh, one Gungir, Gungir's really powerful. What, you, does, what does this thing do? Uh, during the first turn, you can pitch a card to pop a card on your opponent's field, and it stops one of your unit cross guys from being destroyed by battle card effects for the rest of that turn. Oh, okay. You can pitch a command. So it's really good if you end on this with Unicorn. Goki has no way of breaking that usually. Oh, shit. So if you just send um, Star Eater from your extra deck, and you summon this plus Unicorn, or you get to this some other way with Unicorn, and usually they can't break it. Oh, shit, okay. Uh, I played two Valk. You don't want to open multiples again. Uh, because of the Devies, you can almost get to everything you need to. These Devies really help that. And Manju sends you. So you never want to risk opening multiples. And Valk's also just not... Stopping the battle phase is only so good right now. Uh, Trish, Trish is really good. Uh, same reason, you can just tutor it everywhere. I don't want to play multiples. Uh, one decisive armor. I only played that locally because there's quite a bit of trickstar players and Altergeist. Um, it's really good against Altergeist. Okay. Um, and then for the other monsters, I played Dance Princess. This card's insane against Altergeist. What does this thing do? Uh, so they can't respond to my ritual um, spell activations. Oh. And they can't target my ritual monsters they control. Oh. So this card's like single-handedly like plows through Altergeist. Okay. And like they don't see it coming, so you can just keep going. Three Manju, three Senju, um, staple. They're so good. And then for my others, I played three Droll, and I didn't play Ash, I played Gamma instead. I think Gamma's better in this deck, because a lot of the times they try to Ash me, or they try to hit me with Droll after I activate one of my uh, Prep or any other spell card. And this, getting into Omega, is almost a blowout, and also these levels add up to eight. So if I draw this, like, if I draw these, I can use them with Ritual Fodder, or you can just sack them off with Valve to get a flush card. Okay. So usually, like, drawing multiple Gammas isn't as bad in my deck, because you can sack it off to get a fresh card with Valk. And you do that quite often. Um, spells, the one I was Rota Upstart. Uh, consistency is my deck. I need to make sure I'm seeing my cards as much as I can. Okay. And for the ritual spells, uh, two of every one. I saw some people going one cycle, three Kaleidoscope, but I think two and two. Kaleidos so only got so much value. Yeah. And like, I think that these are better twos because if you get reincarnated and you lose one for the rest of the duel, it really limits what you can search from the deck by vanishing from the grave. Okay. Um, and then three prep because it's back. Okay. This card's insane. I love it. Um, yeah. Okay. Uh, sometimes you run out of targets in your deck because a lot of our lower levels are limited in man. So you have to be like actually like careful about fetching that last cost list and like watching how many levels if you can just get the feel like ritual spell directly off of Manju, sometimes okay. that's correct 
Uh, for extra deck, um, I have three parts of my extra deck. I have kaleidoscope targets, cherries targets, and my extra deck. Okay. So I actually use Warload, actually use Cyphering, uh, Dweller. Dweller's awesome in this deck because usually you put Unicor under it or something and it gives you a boost. And that's only good against, like, say, Goki in a specific situation. Burning that Abyss, too. Yeah, and Burning Abyss. Um, this deck just knew it was Burning Abyss, though. So. Uh, Baguska, uh, you make it every now and then. It's not terrible. It's like you brick, you make it. Um, Tornado Dragon, it's just staple, really. It's really good in my deck, going back row and getting anti-spell and imperial order mostly uh the utopia package i need a way to put more damage on the board out and, and interact in a i'd say more of an aggressive way uh then for targets for um kaleidoscope we play arc light and elder entity uh, and this oh well, this card's awesome because it makes when you kaleidoscope you can either search or pop a card in your opponent's field so it gives you variety. Um, usually you send the arc light to keep advantage going. But every now and then if you need to pop something, like earlier today I popped the conductor because I just couldn't get over it efficiently. So this popped the conductor, which is really an inter that's really good interaction. Okay. And then uh, Leo, so you can summon um, Gungir plus Clyde plus Glossless, or you can summon Bryo plus Unicorn, and you can go through all the options you have. Okay. Uh, Star Eater, it's for Gungir or Unicorn mostly. Or Trish, uh, no, Trish, uh, no, Trish, 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 Trish Colossalus, Quasar. Uh, this is also Colossalus plus uh, Valk. Yeah. And then this one's usually Unicorn, or Valk, or Trish, uh, Colossalus. Uh, Cherry targets Electrum, uh, Fire Dude, and Firewall. Uh, I think these are just the Jets generic ones here. A uh, larger event, I don't think I'd play this, but hopefully a lot of people have been playing Would you cut it for a whole day? Yeah. Okay. I mean, I really like hitting Firewall against that deck a lot more, though. And then for my side deck, uh, three Reaper. I think Reaper's really well positioned in this format. Like, I really enjoy hitting... Like, hitting the Firewall limits Goki onto what they can do. And honestly, the Goki board's not that intimidating to me because Unicorn literally, like, blanks everything. Mm -hmm. And usually they end with something in hand and so, like, so you can trish them and just attack over everything. Okay. Uh, I put a small artifact engine... Uh, I think this engine's really well going first against Goki. It just literally says no, and it gives you a beat stick. Would you play the third Sanctum? Yeah, and a second art of Scythe. Now I would definitely consider that. Okay, we'll get to the, what you would cut. Uh, three Call by the Grave. Uh, I used to main this card because it's so important to make sure my cards search and resolve. Mm -hmm. But locally, Ash has been going to the side, so I haven't been as worried. Ogre doesn't scare me, so Call by the Grave went to the side. Uh, three twin for a long second against Ultra Guys. And it should be three evenly, but I didn't grab a third evenly today. Okay, you had 14. So we have 14 today. Okay. Oh, what would I cut? I would keep the evenlies and the twins. A uh, twins are insane in this deck, just being able to pitch some uh, ritual spell. Mm -hmm. You discard, say, Bryo Search, and you can manage both of them to get that uh, free plus. So I really enjoy it. That interaction. This, this card seems like it's losing a lot of favor now. I would definitely agree. Um, it's only good in specific situations. Most of the time, you're okay with your plays getting stopped because you have Valk to not get OTK. So most of the time, if they take the Nag on Droll, you're okay with them taking the Nag on Droll. Yeah. Uh, Reaper, I would consider this becoming spare mode. It frees up my energy quite a bit. Okay. And it's better as the sixth card. Uh, I really think this package is insane. I would consider a third Sanctum, second side. Yeah, but what would you cut these? Yeah, I'd cut the calls. Okay. I don't think the calls are great. Um, other than that, I would consider moving... If I move the Decisive Armor to the side too, because Decisive Armor is only good against the Ultra Geist Imagine. and other trap decks, so it's not insane lined up this format. It's not good against Goki and Pierre. It's underwhelming completely. All right, give me a rundown of your matchup really quick. Uh, so today, we played against round one. We played against the Dark Dino 60 card sum deck. Uh, we won. It was a really interesting matchup. Uh, it's just so hard to out boss monster them, but usually Trish just cleans it all up. We played against Pure Sky Strikers, got boned. Uh, Sky Strikers do Sky Striker things, and this deck does not generate enough advantage to keep up with that. Um, we played against. Shoot, what did I play against today? We played against Goki. Bone Goki. Goki is like my best matchup all day. We play it every day. Uh, Cyber Dragons, I can beat. Cyber Dragons are a terrible matchup. 
Yeah. But other than that, like, the deck's positioned decently if you have a heavy Goki. But other than that, it's more of a fun deck. Like, you're not going to win any large tournament at this point without the other Debbie Rituals. But it's something to have fun. It's something fun to play. If you really like the archetype Necroz, and you've just had it around for a while, mm -hmm. then I would just continue to play it and test different ratios with the Debbies. All right. All right. Thank you, Mr. Josh. Anytime.